Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Scott here, and today I wanted to share with you how I back up my photos. I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately, a lot of people asking how I do it, dispensing a lot of advice on how other people should do it, so I figured it's about time that I make a video on it. So I wanna share with you exactly how I make my photo catalog redundant, but before we get into that, I really think it's time that we have a conversation about hard drives and what's available to you as the consumer. So the first kind of drive I want to talk about are these. These are spindle drives. They're the kind of old technology. When someone says hard drive, this is pretty much what I think of. Um, really inexpensive for the amount of storage that you can get. But the problem is, is that they're pretty slow. So you wouldn't want to use this as an operating system drive because of that. However, for photo storage and cataloging, these work really great because typically you have a lot of information that you don't need to read and write to uh, very quickly, so these drives work really good, especially when you have a lot of photos. And uh, I'll show you kind of how many photos I have in my Lightroom catalog uh, and how all of that works in a minute. But before we get to that, the next type of drive that I wanna talk about are these solid state drives. So this is sort of the next evolution of hard drives. Instead of rotating magnetic disks that store your data, everything is stuck on a chip. So it uses far less power, no moving parts, much, much, much faster. But there's a problem with these drives too in that the interface you know, between these two drives on your motherboard is exactly the same. So there's still a theoretical limit to how fast these drives can get and you probably aren't going to be using those drives anytime soon for backup because you know in the small form factor that a lot of people buy these drives in um, they're still pretty expensive so i still end up using these drives as my main backup source because they're so inexpensive the last kind of drive that uh, i want to talk about are these drives and this is basically the same thing as an SSD. So it uses a much faster interface to the computer, which means that it can be five to seven times faster than even a SSD, a traditional SSD. You probably aren't going to buy these anytime soon for photo storage because the price of these is like through the roof. They're really, really, really expensive because the flash technology that is used on these drives is used in every single digital device in the world today. So the demand is very high and the price is also very high. But the, the plus side to these drives is that they're super, super, super fast. So it's really, really good to be using them for an operating system drive um, as one kind of tier elevated from your normal kind of SSD that everybody's familiar with. So I currently use two six terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drives. They're these old spindle drives, you know, that are in my computer, um, which you can't see, it's back over here. And I use two of them because one of them is a live drive that has, you know, that, that Lightroom is referencing everything. And I have another one as a backup that is being periodically echoed to. So I have full redundancy in that, but I'm not using hardware or software to do it live, like you would see in a RAID configuration. So this is something that I do as a scheduled backup. So since I said RAID, I probably should explain to you a little bit more about what RAID is. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And basically what that means is that you have a series of drives kind of linked together either with software or with hardware that kind of act as one drive to the computer. So you only see one, but there might be multiple upon multiple drives in a RAID array. And the two forms of RAID that you should really only be concerned with, at least in this video, are RAID 0 and RAID 1. So let's talk about RAID 0 first. RAID 0 is a non-redundant form of using the array. So the benefit here is performance. The more drives you have in a RAID 0 array, the faster it should get. But before you get all hot and bothered about performance increases with using RAID 0, know this. Uh, you really only see that, that benefit of speed when you're transferring very large files. So really large video files from like a RED camera are going to see a much more of an improvement gain over thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny files like photos. So the big negative to RAID 0 is no redundancy. The content of each file is distributed among all the disks in the set. So if one of those disks fails, you have total loss. 
not a really good thing to have if you're concerned with redundancy. So I personally don't use RAID 0. So the next kind of RAID configuration you should be aware of is RAID 1. So this means that the data is written identically to two drives in the set. So you always have a mirrored set. If one of those drives fails, there's another one there to take its place, and the RAID configuration can keep working with only that one drive. Ideally, you would take the old or bad drive out and replace it with a new drive, and then it will rebuild the RAID set. So this is nice for redundancy but I personally don't use RAID 1 either. Okay, so now that you know a little bit more about RAID, you might be asking yourself, why don't I use it? I just told you that I don't like RAID 1 or RAID 0, so why? Why don't I like using RAID? And RAID has a few drawbacks, so let's talk about the drawbacks of RAID. First and foremost, RAID doesn't prevent against data loss due to user error or accidental deletion. Because the RAID set is live and you are writing to multiple drives at the same time, if something happens to that particular file as it's being written or if you accidentally delete a file, it gets deleted across the entire set. So there's no way that you can go back and retrieve information because it's being written or deleted live as you do it. This is also a negative because it doesn't prevent against viruses or malware. So if one of those drives gets infected because it's writing to multiple drives at the same time, that virus or that malware is gonna be propagated on every single drive in the set. Also not good. So the next thing I don't like about RAID is data corruption due to failed hardware or software. This actually happened to me. I was running a RAID array uh, off the motherboard of my computer. My motherboard settings got reset. All of my drives that were in RAID fell out of RAID. And the last reason why I particularly don't like RAID is theft or damage. So typically when you have a RAID array, it's all contained in one box. So if that box gets stolen or damaged, everything in that particular box goes away as well. Okay, so now that I've told you why RAID isn't a good idea, then why is my way better? We're going to call my way SBID, or Scheduled Backup of Independent Disks. And basically what this means is that you have kind of the same thing as RAID. You are mirroring one drive to another, but you're using software and a schedule to make a backup instead of having it happen live at the time that you do it. So this is advantageous in more than one way. Uh, one, it's vastly more simple. It's not using uh, hardware or software to keep everything contained in, in an array. The drives are always going to be separate. So if something happens to one drive, I have another drive that I can just point Lightroom in the direction of and everything is fine. So the next reason why I like my method of SBID is that it can be portable and stored off-site. This is especially important if you work on a laptop. So you obviously can't take these big magnetic hard drives and put them in a laptop, but you can buy portable magnetic hard drives, plug them into your computer, use one of them as your live drive, and then another one as the backup, and use a program like SyncToy or Macrium Reflect Free on a PC, or Carbon Copy Cloner and Super Duper on a Mac. So the last reason why SBID really works for me as a photographer is that the way Lightroom works, it doesn't need direct access to your photos to be quick. The database that Lightroom uses and the previews that Lightroom uses are all stored on my super fast NVMe drive and not on the super slow hard drive like this. So I don't really need those archival drives to be really quick. I mean, yes, it does take a little bit longer to offload images onto those drives, but that's okay. Once they're there, it doesn't really matter in terms of speed because the program and the catalog and the previews are all being read from a super fast drive. So if you're on a laptop, this would make sense for you too to keep your catalog file and your program obviously on the main drive of your computer, your OS drive, and then keep all of your photos on a little removable drive like this or multiple removable drives like this using scheduled backups. So the last and final kind of defense you have against data loss is to use something like a cloud service backup, like iDrive or a Cronus True Image or Backblaze. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. You can find information on them online. So that's personally how I back up my photos using the SBID method. I hope you guys like that. If you did, hit the like button down below. If you loved it, subscribe to the channel and comment, please, down below. I'd love to see what you guys are doing to back up your photo libraries. Until next time, Happy shooting. See you later.